Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is The Lineup. You can sit right here, Mr. Becker. Oh, um, uh, here? Sure, sure, that's all right. Uh, uh, thank you. Is it all right if I smoke? Sure, sure, go ahead. <clears throat> you think you have the man? Well, we have no idea. Mm -hmm. You smoke? Uh, no, thanks, not right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, if you do, if you've caught the man, I'll know him. I hope so. Like I told you... His face pressed this close, maybe a foot away from where I was looking through the curtains. Mm -hmm. And you never saw him before? Oh, no, no, I never saw him before. Like the guy across the hall, the guy that was killed, mm -hmm. I never saw him before. And he lived right across the hall from me. You may think that may sound funny, but then... No, no, it's very possible. Mm -hmm. Oh, I lived there for at least, I don't know, about seven months. Oh, there's Sergeant Grubb. Yeah, he interrogates the line. Oh, he's a nice guy. He <laughs> sure is. I like May him. I have your attention, please? <laughs> Yeah. You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner, as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Bring on the line. All right, boys, keep it moving right over here to the end of the stage. Come on, come on, come on. Now turn and face front hands to your sides. Now when I call your number, step out and face the audience. Keep your head up and look straight ahead. Talk up so everybody can hear you. All right, number one, George Hadley, robbery. Where do you live, George? Here, in town here I live. You got an address? Yeah, sure, North 23rd. 1040 North 23rd. For how long? Last. How long have you lived at that address? A long time. What's a long time? Well, a couple of years, I guess. That long I lived there at least, yes. That's a long time, isn't it? Where are you from? Pittsburgh. What's your business? Baker. That was back in Pittsburgh, though. I don't have too many baking jobs since I come here. There's too many bakers. What were you doing over at uh, Madison Terrace last night? I was walking. You always take a walk at 11 o'clock at night? Not always. Last night I took one. There's something the matter with that. These times when you do take walks, do you always carry a flashlight and a screwdriver under your shirt? Oh, I just happened to have them with me last night. There's something the matter with that? No. Unless you try to break into a house. I wasn't trying to break in. You had the window open. Yeah, sure. I was breaking in. Yeah, no, about that. Okay, George, step back. Number two, Harry Saunders, disturbing the peace. Oh, oh yes, there's the man up there. Tell yeah, the which one? The next I ain't got one no in line. Uh, well, uh, let's wait till these questions. Sure, wherever I can. Well, where was it last night? Oh, uh, somewhere over on Lake or uh, Lake Street or uh, something like that. Something like that. In the park, wasn't it? Yeah. The arresting officer said you were trying to catch a swan. Catch it? I was feeding the thing. I was trying to get the thing over so I could pet it. You didn't want to eat it? A swan? You had a big club on the ground beside you. It wasn't my club. It was just laying there. I happened along, see the swan swimming around, so I start throwing the thing some lousy crumbs. I didn't notice no club on the ground. Eat a swan? Your story doesn't quite fit with the story we got from the arresting officer. Arresting officer? Arresting officer? What did he say? What did he say? Don't tell me. Tell the people. All right. What did the arresting officer say? I was feeding the stupid bird some breadcrumbs. What's the matter with that? 
Where am I going to eat a swan, eh? Where am I going to eat it? That's a lot of bird. I'm going to start a fire right in the middle of the park, eh? Okay, Harry, okay, step back. Eat a swan. Where am I going to get a pot that big, eh? Huh? Where? That's enough, Harry. It's all Nick. Number three, Tom Pearson. Uh, 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 that's charge. him. That looks like him. Okay, make sure. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's the man. Yes, I'm sure. Okay. Uh-huh. Sergeant Graham. Uh, yes, Lieutenant. Number three, hold for interrogation. Okay. Just sit in that chair, Pearson. Okay. Well, figured out where you were yesterday afternoon? I told you. Watching the chess players in Jackson Park. Watching the chess players in Jackson Park. Showed your pictures around over there this afternoon. Yeah? Yeah. Funny nobody remembered seeing you. Real funny, because that's where I was. You like chess, huh? I got interested. How does a bishop move? Huh? Yeah, how does a bishop move on a chessboard? I just watch. I don't know the rules. Well, doesn't it get pretty dull if you don't know what's going on? I got nothing else to do. It's a nice day, so I watch some old duffers playing chess. You're going to throw me in jail for that? You were identified in the line. Yeah? Yeah. The man who identified you said you were climbing down a fire escape. I told you I was in the park. Watching a chess game. Watching a chess game. You know Michael Hunter? Yeah. You know someone killed him? No, but I can't say I'm unhappy about it. You threatened Michael Hunter once, didn't you? If I did, it was a long time ago. But you threatened him. Yeah, yeah, I threatened him. If you want to call it that, I threatened a lot of people if you want to call it that. What were you doing at Hunter's apartment yesterday? I was in Jackson Park. You've been identified as the man who sneaked down the fire escape. I was watching the chess players, remember? You were booked back in 47 for assaulting Michael Hunter. Is that right? That right? He kept bothering my kid's sister. You didn't like him, huh? No, I didn't like him, would you? I didn't know him. That story about Jackson Park won't sell for us. I didn't kill Hunter. What do you want me to do, lie? You want me to lie, huh? I was in Jackson Park. How long have you known Michael Hunter? Four years, five years. Where'd you meet him? My sister was in some play with him, but I didn't kill him. But you really worked him over. Sure, what do you want? He made it tough on the kid, I made it tough on him. He deserved it. You used a tire chain on him, didn't you? Something like that. How long has Hunter lived at his present address? How should I know? In your neighborhood, isn't it? Yeah, so what? You can't take no murder on me. I didn't kill him. Nobody said you did. What? Then what's this all Hunter about? isn't dead. He isn't dead? He's in a coma. He may not make it. We just want the man who stabbed him. No, I'm not it. Hunter had some kind of an acting school, didn't he? Yeah, that's how my sister got to know him. The whole setup was a phony. How do you know? I know. He was a lousy actor. Looked good. Told dames he could do something for him. Uh, Lieutenant, can I uh, see you for a minute? Okay. <clears throat> We've located the girl along that scarf. Got her down the hall. Yeah, okay. Uh, Matt, take Pearson downstairs. I'll be right back. Right. Asher turned her up. Wasn't easy. He checked all of Hunter's previous so-called students. Uh-huh. She was one of them. He just showed her the scarf, and she admitted it belonged to her. This is Miss Helen Roberts. Hi. This is Lieutenant Guthrie, Miss Roberts. Glad to know you. How do you do, Miss Roberts? Uh, just keep your seat. Sure. How long have you known Michael Hunter? Who's he? Don't you know Michael Hunter? No. Who's he? Well, your scarf was found in his apartment. Oh, him. Oh. Oh, then you do know him. Sure. I forgot his name. I haven't known him very long. How long? A couple of days since Friday. Yeah, Friday. Good-looking guy. He said I got sex appeal. Where'd you meet him? Where I work. When I went on the night shift. I work at the White Spot. It's a 24-hour restaurant on Mariposa Street. Yeah, food ain't bad. You eating there? Yeah, ain't bad. I went on the night shift and I met this guy, this hunter. Spotted him right off, real cute. Asked me if I'd ever done any acting. Said I had sex appeal. When was the last time you saw Mr. Hunter? Oh, I only saw him once. I only known him for a couple of days. When was it? Yesterday afternoon. What time? Oh, like around four. Why, what's he done? Someone tried to kill him. You're kidding. No. Gosh, he was going to make an actress out of me. He was going to teach me how to act so I could get a job, another job, out of that beanery. Mm-hmm. Did you give him any money? I sure did, 20 bucks for lessons. Where's the scarf? Here. This is your scarf, isn't it? Yeah. 
What time did you leave Hunter's apartment? Right after the lesson. About a half hour later, I guess. What time did I say I was there? Four o'clock. Yeah, I got a bad memory. Four o'clock. Well, I guess I left about 4.30 then. Was anybody else there? Sure. Who? Mr. Hunter. He was giving me a lesson. I mean anybody else besides Mr. Hunter. Me. Did he say he was expecting anyone? Not to the best of my knowledge. Have any ideas who might have stabbed him? I know. Nobody had any enemies. Look, mister, all I know is he said with my sex appeal I should be in Hollywood pictures, and I gave him $20 for acting lessons. I don't know none of his friends, and I don't know none of his enemies. Okay. Thank you, Miss Roberts. To be sure. Can I go now? Yes. Yeah, but don't try to leave town. We may want to talk to you again. Leave town? On what? I gave Mr. Hunter my last 20 bucks. And you say, don't leave town. Goodbye, Miss Roberts. Yeah. What was your name? Uh, Quine. To be sure. You're cute. Uh, uh, you stop in the white spot sometime. Night. I'm working the night shift. Yeah, I'll try to get around. My scarf, please. We'll have to keep it as evidence. Okay. Well, bye. Au revoir. <laughs> you better put a man on her. <laughs> Are you kidding? Come on in. Hi, Doc. Oh, hello, boys. Have a seat. Thanks. There's cigarettes on the desk. There. I got one. Well, suppose you want to know about Hunter. Huh? Yeah, yeah. What's the latest? Oh, he's pretty bad. Still in a coma. Just making out a report here. Think he'll make it? Maybe, but I doubt it. Ruptured lung, right hemothorax, and pneumothorax. His response to treatment has been very poor. How are his chances of regaining consciousness? Practically none. Well, if he did regain consciousness, uh, could he recognize anyone? Mm, probably not. In a case like this, where the patient has gone into coma due to lack of oxygen, the damage to the brain tissue is usually too extensive. Mm -hmm. Tissues of the brain are especially sensitive to lack of oxygen. And the damage done is permanent. Then, uh, if he did come out of it, he wouldn't be able to point out the man who stabbed him, huh? Nope. Well, how about the wound? Long, sharp implement. Knife, probably. Mm. Could a woman do it? Sure. Well, thanks, Doc. You bet. I'll let you know the minute anything happens. Tomorrow night, another big show joins the fall lineup. James Hilton introduces Deborah Carr in James M. Barry's Quality Street to open another star-studded season of outstanding dramas on most of these same CBS radio stations. Listen, too, for Lucille Watson in Ladies of the Jury tomorrow night on your Broadway Playhouse. We're covering every inch, Ben. If it's here in Hunter's apartment, we'll find it. Yeah. Now, how about the garbage cans in the alley? Ash is going through them now. Doesn't seem to care for it. <laughs> we ran a small weighted cardboard box down the incinerator chute to make sure nothing was stuck in it. And where is it? With the chute? Yeah. I'll show you. It's in the hall closet. Oh. Chute's in there. One of these on each floor. Yeah. How about the incinerator itself? Mm, cleaning it out right now. Well, who's this? Hmm? Oh, it's Becker. Oh, uh, hello, uh, Lieutenant. Um, hello, Mr. Becker. Uh, this is Mrs. Becker, uh, Lieutenant Guthrie. Hello, Mrs. Becker. Hello, Lieutenant. This is Sergeant Quine, Mr. and Mrs. Becker. Hello, hello, Sergeant. Quine. Hey, what's all the confusion about? Uh, why all the policemen? They're uh, looking for the weapon. Oh, well. You think it might be in the building? Uh, it could be. We know it's probably a knife, and a long one. Might have thrown it away or tried to hide it before he went back to the street. Pearson? Mm, maybe. That's the man you identified, isn't it? Yes, dear. Yes, uh, how well did you know Mr. Hunter, Mrs. Becker? Oh, he was just a neighbor. I didn't know him well at all. 
Just saw him a few times. Mm-hmm. Ever talked to him? A few times, yes. And when was the last time? Three, four days ago, I imagine. Just hello and how are you? Mm-hmm. Ever notice anybody with him? No. Doesn't have any friends you know of? No. Well, he had a young lady in his apartment yesterday. He did? That's right. Neither of you saw her? No, I didn't see her. Oh, no, 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 I didn't. Uh, ben. Oh, excuse me, please. The janitor just came on duty. Yeah? We showed him a picture of Pearson. He remembers him. Oh, from where? Here. He says Pearson was here yesterday and asked for Hunter's apartment number. out of his mind. The janitor identified you from your picture. He's crazy. But he identified you. He says you were in that building yesterday. Well, I wasn't. He says you asked for Hunter's room number. He's mistaken, I tell you. He made a mistake. It wasn't me. A jury sure gonna think it was. Guthrie. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. Okay. Well, we can tell the boys to stop looking for that knife. It's been found? Yep. In the silverware we took out of Hunter's apartment. One of the butcher knives has his blood on it. Somebody tried to clean it, but there was enough rust pits to leave a little blood for the spectrograph. What does that mean? It means you're still in a lot of trouble. You were identified by two people who swear they saw you in that building. Okay. What? I was there, but I didn't kill him. Well, he's not dead yet. Well, I didn't stab him. If you think I went up there to Knife Hunter, would I have gone in by the front, talked to the janitor, and let somebody else see me? Well, might not have been premeditated. It was Hunter's butcher knife. That kind of indicates that it wasn't premeditated. I didn't go up there to stab him. He was already stabbed when I got there. Well, then why did you leave by the fire escape? Because Hunter was on the floor bleeding. When? When I got there. How did you get in? I walked in. The door was open. Why didn't you call the hospital? Got scared, you blame me? Besides, he looked good bleeding. Why didn't you tell us this when we brought you in? Are you serious? What do you think? What time did you arrive at Hunter's? Around 5, 5.15. See anybody? Just a janitor. How long did you stay in the apartment? Just long enough to look, and then I beat it out on a fire escape. You expect us to believe that? Look, it's a truth. I tell you, I walk... Guthrie? Yeah? Oh. Uh Uh-huh. Well, keep with her. Yeah, Ben. Uh, come on in here and get Pearson. Right. We'll have another talk later, Pearson. Okay, but I didn't stab Hunter. You're in a spot. you got to admit that. Yeah. Okay, take him down. Let's go, Pearson. Okay. Matt and I are going out for a while. We'll check in. Okay. Say, that last phone call. Uh-huh, Crockett. He's been tailing Helen Roberts. Yeah, She got in touch with some man at 665 North Lincoln. Yeah? Crockett talked to him. He's been running an advertisement for people to drive to California with him. Told Crockett that Helen Roberts paid him $20. Supposed to leave with him tomorrow morning. You think maybe... I don't know. She told us she gave Hunter her last $20. Oh, what if she doesn't go to work? You'd like that, huh? Don't be silly. Helen's a nice-looking doll. I don't mind keeping her company. Well, just make sure she doesn't come back to her apartment before we get a chance to go over it good. I still say, what if she doesn't leave? Oh, she will. The manager told me he owes her a week's salary. She'll go down there and collect it and tell him... Hey, here she comes. Okay. Now, look, Quine. She probably won't stay there long. Just collect the money and tell her boss she's going to quit. How long do you want? A couple of hours, anyway. Three, if you can give it to us. Yeah, I might even give you more. But now, don't make it look official. Just tell her you thought she'd stop in and say hello. You're telling me how to operate. <laughs> Don one quiet. Get going, get yeah, going. pleasure. <laughs> All right. Now, what do we do? Get in her apartment and check everything, including her toothbrush. sure would have been a lot simpler if we knew what she had on that day. Well, collect everything. Shoes, dresses. Hey, hey. Huh? <laughs> how, uh, how about these? Mm-hmm. Lovely. Match my eyes, don't they? Oh, come on, come on. 
What's all that stuff? You look like you've been to a sale. Yeah, how long will it take you to go over these clothes, Evans? For what? Blood. Michael Hunter's blood. Go through all this? Yeah. Uh, check the shoes first. Hunter bled a lot, and she just might have stepped in some. Who's she? A blonde named Helen Roberts was in the apartment. Well, Ben, there's a lot of stuff. How long? Maybe an hour, maybe more. Okay. <laughs> these would look nice on you, Matt. That's what I said. Match your eyes. <laughs> See, Ben? Uh, want some more coffee? Uh, gee, thanks, Dick, but I really got to get home. Hey, how come you're quitting your job? Well, I got tired of it. I I'm going to get something else, something that suits my talents more, you know. Yeah. Do you still want to be an actress? Well, I don't know. I guess maybe I'd still like to be one, but I don't know. I'm still pretty upset about Mr. Hunter's dying. I don't know anybody else in the acting business. Uh, well, uh, I know a few people. You do? Gosh, that would be wonderful. Mr. Hunter always said I had a lot of sex appeal and things, and I don't know why I shouldn't try to be an actress. I know I got the talent for it. Uh, uh, why don't we get out of here? Go somewhere and talk some more. Well, I really should be getting home. I gotta start looking for another job tomorrow. Well, it's early. Well, I don't really think Besides, I Besides, you don't want to go looking for another job until we see what I can do for you with my friends. Okay. When do you have to be on duty again? Oh, whenever I feel like it. Yeah? Sure, the department doesn't make a move without me. Nothing on these. Well, here's another pair. You know, I was just thinking, if Quine didn't do so well and Helen went home, she'd probably call robbery and we'd get arrested. <laughs> what makes you think this Roberts girl has anything to do with this? Well, I don't, uh... Just checking every possibility. I think Pearson's our boy. No, I don't think so. He had a good point when he said he'd... He'd have been foolish to walk in the front door. Well, he could have figured that one out ahead of time. Well, if he's going to be that smart, he wouldn't have left the knife around. Oh, I don't think that was so stupid. If we just examined those knives on chance, we didn't expect to find anything. Yeah, but we did. Yeah, but it's still smart. Walk in the front door, use the guy's own butcher knife, and put it back in the drawer. That's smart? You don't think he did it? Well, I'll just bet you... How much? You name it. Dinner? Bet. I think you better work up a good appetite, Ben. Oh, you find something? Mm -hmm. On the heel of these pumps. Here, take a look. I'll get it. Here's a sample of Hunter's blood. Uh-huh. Yeah? This is off the heel. It's the same type. Well, well how yeah, you doing? I see. <laughs> Where? Well, I... Okay, just a minute. Ben. Yeah? It's Quine. He's in some Chinese restaurant. With a girl? Yeah. Well, uh, tell him to bring her in. Right. Bring her in, Quine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he says you'll be glad to. She's been trying to show him how to eat with chopsticks. You're a swell one, you are. A swell one. Pretending you wanted the date. I'm sorry, but the lieutenant the here... The lieutenant, huh? You're the lieutenant, aren't you? That's right. Sit down, please. We met before, haven't we not? Yeah. Uh, please have a seat. Who's he? That's Sergeant... What's this all about? Why did this guy bring me down here? Wanted a date. Wanted to help me meet some people that could help me get a job. I told him to bring you in. Well, I ain't sore about that. I'm sore about him playing up to me. He said he wasn't even on duty. Miss Roberts. Yeah. Why did you kill Mr. Hunter? didn't have nothing to do with it. Your scarf was in his apartment? I don't know you. Sure I'm so my scarf was in his apartment. You found it there, I left it there, so what? You think I killed him with my scarf? He was stabbed. You think I... He's dead? Died a half hour ago. But you said he... We found some of his blood on one of your shoes. On one of my shoes? What are you doing with one of my shoes? How did you get it? He wasn't wounded. Stabbed by a knife when you last saw him? Say, who are you, anyway? I told you, no, I'm sorry. No, he wasn't stabbed or nothing like that. He was walking around and he wasn't doing it with no knife in his back. How'd you know he was stabbed in the back? Well, I guess. Wasn't he? How'd you get blood on your shoes if he wasn't stabbed? I don't know. 
I cut my finger a couple of days ago, see? It was his blood on your shoes. You killed him with a butcher knife from his kitchen drawer. I did not. And besides, who are you? Sergeant Grubb. You killed him with it and wiped it off. Well, if I did that, how did you find any blood how, huh? Spectrograph. Spectra what? Don't come on like Dick Tracy with me. You could have washed it with soap and water and the spectrograph would still find it. I don't believe it. Then explain the blood on your shoes. Well, actually, Mr. Hunter was stabbed when I got there. I got scared and ran. You can understand why I didn't tell you about it. I was scared. You can understand, Lieutenant. A man named Pearson was there after he was stabbed, too. Did you run into each other? Well, I didn't know his name, but there was a man there. He didn't see you. He didn't? Why did you kill Hunter? (sighs) Because he said he couldn't do nothing with me no more. He said he couldn't help me, and I asked him for my money back. How much money had you given him? Lots, a couple of hundred. We was going to get married. (laughs) He broke my heart. So you stabbed him with that kitchen knife? Yes. He was pouring some beer, and I couldn't stand it. He said we was going to drink to our parting, and I wasn't going to be parted by no guy what had 200 clams of mine. (laughs) Will I get the chair? Take her out, Clay. Come on. And you, Richard. You're all alike. Just the man. Yeah, uh, let's go. Lieutenant. Yeah? Will the reporters want to talk to me? Probably. I'll see them. I'm on the ragged edge of disaster, but I'll see them. Au revoir. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye, Mr. Greb. To be sure. Oh. Holy cow. Well, you owe me a dinner. Yeah, yeah. You know something? What? Better she never became an actress. Lineup, where before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next Wednesday when we again bring you the lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call up a number, then name and charge. If you have any questions or identification, please remember the number of... The Lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Greb, was written by Harvey Easton and edited by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were High Everback, Howard McNear, Victor Perrin, Peter Leeds, and Virginia Gregg. The Lineup is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. Two heavyweight contenders climb through the ropes tonight when CBS Radio brings you another fast and furious boxing exclusive. It's Archie Moore versus Emberl Davidson in what promises to be one of the slugfests of the new season. Don't miss a single exchange of blows when Davidson and Moore fight it out. Ten rounds of heavyweight boxing exclusive tonight on most of these same CBS stations. To say it with music... C. CBS. B. For the best... Yes, yes, yes. The stars that dress is CBS. And remember, mystery fans can't miss when it's the FBI in Peace and War Thursdays on the CBS Radio Network. (laughs) 